Hey guys, Alexander Williamson here with The Secret History Living Inside of Your Aquarium. Today we're going to talk about one plant in particular, and it's a plant that I really love. It's a Southeast Asian plant that's usually uh, grown submerged, which means totally underwater its whole life, rather than immersed. Although you can buy it immersed uh, commercially, but at your local fish shop they're probably going to be culturing uh, it or uh, raising it, growing it um, underwater. And can you guess which plant it is? Uh, I'm sure you can because it'll be in the title. So what I like to call this plant is the clog drain uh, slash hairball plant because it looks hideous outside of water when it has been immersed. I mean, just awful. This stuff, I mean, it looks like something that a cat regurgitated. <laughs> so, uh, but I want you to see that because... It is really quite something what it does when you get it in the water. As you, as as we get it in the water, and you, the light's going to be kind of funky, so we'll we'll change that as we go. Um, and I want to put it behind this rock, and I'll tell you why in a moment. I'll get my little tweezers here. But this plant is just a beautiful plant in the water. It's got purple and green and red and it's just a great specimen. Um, if you're growing with uh, fertilizer and and uh, substrate uh, nutrients, things like that, other than just gravel that you know fish are living in, uh, you'll get this bright pink and purple crown and the, these needles, like almost like pine tree needles. And this stuff can grow fast. It can grow like six inches in a week if you're pumping CO2 and ferts and iron into, into the water. But for me, I'm just kind of building up a background of a Southeast Asian themed um, aquarium here. Australian, Southeast Asian, and uh, for my purposes, I have other uh, strains of it or strands of it, same same strain, I should say, growing down here, and you can see that uh, it still has some purple to it here um, and some bronze colors to it, but it's not qu quite as uh, bushy and dense as when it's been grown immerse or uh, submerged rather than immersed and in CO2. So it's a really beautiful plant. It's called Rotala Wallichia or Wallichia, Wallichii, um, depending on who you ask how to say it. Um, it's great for an aquascape in that it really will pop with some red, but it's not overwhelming, so you can still have another red uh, plant, like a cardinalis or something. Um, plant or a red rotala plant of a bushier variety that's been grown um, immersed rather than submerged to. If this plant is grown out of water and is an immersed version of the plant, you can expect to see leaves that are about uh, the size and shape of this plant here, and then they wrap around that main stem helically. And for propagating it, you just cut it and it, it'll grow wherever you cut it as long as you leave probably like an inch or two. So it's it's a really nice plant. Um, it's really easy. There's nothing you really need to know about taking care of it for it to exist. Um, but for it to thrive and to show off its true colors, then it's more of a moderate to uh, difficult plant to keep. And so I like to tell people that though, because a lot of people say, oh, that's a difficult plant or that's an easy plant. And a lot of it just depends what you want out of the plant. Because if all you want is cover and a fast growing plant that's going to use up nitrates and kind of have a different texture than everything else, then this plant is great. But if you specifically wanted a red and purple and green flare in your tank, then um, yeah, it's a difficult plant to keep at that status. Um, but you can see how much it draws your eye to it. Um, let me show you what, so this is what I'm seeing basically in the room and it just draws your eye right to it. Um, so it's a great plant out of water uh, or if it crests the water since it grows so quickly, uh, it will come out of the water and it can actually have purple flowers which is kind of cool and then the parts of the plant that are out of water the needles will fall away and uh, you'll see like I said more of this type of roughage and leaves on it um, 
as for cutting it just cut it anywhere it doesn't matter uh, and you can replant it it grows with the roots in the ground or gravel um, getting nutrients that works fine I will probably have mine out of it and I'll keep it like I have these ones where I have uh, a liquid fertilizer that I add to the mix as well as um, slopes in the tank so you can see the circulation up here is going around and it's slow around the edges and things are dropping off down the edge I don't know if you can make that out but things are dropping off down to the edge and then that way uh, these plants down here are getting uh, all the nutrients to their roots literally the big pieces as they break down so that's one way to do it um, I'm kinda growing a bushy garden back here for um, little uh, fish and things now one drawback of this plant is that uh, a lot of times you'll have autosynclus or little nippy fish tetras and um, I mean honestly these rainbows or these endlers could could do it somewhat but these little little fish like to pull at Daphnia and on things growing there like as you can see this is a, a mop I made for collecting the rainbow fish eggs the fork tails in the tank and this guppy's already like yanking on cotton thread so um, these needles are very fine and if algae or um, any sort of little microscopic plankton or bugs are growing in there um, or you know copepods the proper name probably um, the fish will not hesitate to yank on it to get to it and also bigger fish won't hesitate to dig through the roots and kick up a lot of these needles and things so having a good filter or just cleaning the, out the tank frequently helps with that so that's the one drawback I'd say watch out for autosynclus uh, the most or um, any, any fish that are big fans of algae uh, like green string algae or um, things like that so awesome plant I hope you like it. Uh, I hope you give it a shot. It was really cheap. For me, it was $3.99. Um, pretty common around here in Seattle. It should be, you know, if it can grow in a good tank, it can grow like five or six inches a week. It's an insane, one of those seaweed type plants. So, uh, yeah, and it's from Southeast Asia, as I said. So, it goes well in my Southeast Asian tank. Um, but, I'm going to do this and then I'll have a lower level of some actual bright red and I'll probably put a little bit of CO2 and then I'm using a little bit of liquid nitrogen uh, or nitrate, sorry, not nitrogen, liquid nitrogen. That would be real bad in the fish tank. Um, and then as well as having other things um, like iron and uh, potassium that I put in there supplementally, but mostly it's fish fertilizer and then every two weeks or so I put extra fertilizer in there and then I don't have an enriched substrate so this stuff could be going crazy if if I wanted it to but right now that is not my um, prerogative so yeah uh, check it out look it up online um, it's it's been around a while it's actually considered an invasive like uh, species for watercrafts and things in some parts of the world uh, it does best in warm waters with really high light um, here's a, just a peacock gudgeon, uh, just thought I'd show you that in the Southeast Asian, Papua New Guinea is where he's from, Port Moresby, uh, is where he was collected, and, uh, the fork tails that are in here, and then some, uh, endlers that will be leaving because they are not native to Southeast Asia, but, if you like this information, if it helped you, if it helped you decide, if you saw pictures that looked really different because it was this bushy plant with purple flowers or leaves on top, that means that it was grown out of water with just the roots underwater, and it was not the type grown um, underwater its whole life. And when you grow it underwater its whole life, then it doesn't have to undergo the transformation, and you don't have to guess what it's going to look like. You'll know what it'll look like for the most part and be able to control those parameters. So I hope that you guys got some information out of this and are enjoying the channel. This is just a species spotlight for plants and just showing the tank a little bit. But um, I will be back next time. Uh, we'll be talking some more history and some more trivia and facts. And if you like this channel, please hit the like, thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, it means the world to me if you want to help me put these fish through college. Um, you know, they're already uh, in schools 
but uh, I really want to be able to send them to college. So uh, every count, every every dollar counts through Patreon. I am not a monetized channel at the moment on YouTube. So uh, hopefully you're not having to watch a bunch of ads. I don't know. Let me know if, if you still have to watch a bunch of ads if you're still listening. So if you stuck with me this long, might as well subscribe if you're not already. Right, guys? All right. Have a good night. Take care of your fish. Take care of yourself. Take it easy and keep on swimming.